You've given a very interesting statement here to comment upon. The evolution of the human spirit is the main goal and to reach it one should use hermetic magic. That is why theurgy is the form of magic which has as a goal to visualize yourself as a god, which as a final result transforms humans into god, with a capital G. So I would like to analyze this statement part by part. So the evolution of the human spirit is the main goal. I would prefer to broaden it, the evolution of spirits, not only the human spirit, but also if I would incarnate as, for instance, a cat, it would still be my goal to evolve myself. And also the purpose of life is to aid this evolution. So I should help my dog to evolve, also, not only myself. To be completely self-serving in striving for your own light is very luciferical in nature. And as long as we are luciferical in nature, we will of course never become one with God. So this is not a tendency we should uh, pursue in that manner. Of course, being luciferical in nature, we can gain lots of knowledge and power, but ultimately that too is a dead end road. So, and to reach it, so to reach this evolution, one should use hermetic magic. Um, I part of disagree with this. Um, hermeticism is one form of um, gaining, you could say, a, a state of higher consciousness, gaining enlightenment. Um, the other form is to use compassion. So we have really two paths which we can choose from. We can choose to, in a way, use our knowledge, our wisdom, our understanding, our uh, control, our technology to evolve our beings. And, but we can also use our hearts, our mystical power, our ability to communicate, to become one, to have empathy and understanding to evolve ourselves. So magic is a path, mysticism is another path, and both of them I consider to be completely valid paths, and it is possible with either path to reach the higher stages of consciousness. So ultimately I see these two parts, while they may seem divergent from our level, to converge actually leading us to a higher consciousness, a state of enlightenment. So I definitely wouldn't say that the hermetical path is the only one uh, to follow. If we are considering the, the hermetical uh, path of evolution, it is ultimately a path of um, forming patterns which ultimately um, by building up certain patterns, these patterns will try to manifest themselves. And ultimately to manifest themselves, you need a form or the, the energy will create a form so it can manifest. So for instance, if I have an energy of wanting to run and jump, ultimately, I will need a form which has legs to do that with. And similarly, we can build up patterns using hermetic magic which will require a higher form of being to manifest them. So we can in a way pull ourselves out of the swamp by our own hairs by creating structures which are higher than we are now and these structures will ultimately also raise the level of our manifestation. So we build in a way improved versions of ourselves using these hermetic disciplines. And this way we can yeah, uh, evolve ourselves. The mystical way of doing this is basically by association. So by associating and trying to mimic the behavior and learn from the example of higher beings, um, I can in a way emulate 
such a higher being even though I'm not. So t the typical saying like what would Jesus do or what would Buddha do <laughs> and try to act in a similar manner is the mystical method of creating a similar evolutionary change in our uh, manifestation, in our form and also in our consciousness. So hermeticism is indeed a method but not the only method. And then we come to theurgy. So I should first explain the word a bit. Um, um, in magic you have two forms of magic. Thaumaturgy uh, is in a way creating of miracles and theurgy which is the higher magic, the divine magic. And thaumaturgy is the magic which will ultimately manifest in the world of form. So it will change a person's thoughts, emotions, uh, energy body, physical body. And uh, theurgy is more a level of magic which acts upon um, the less physical part. So possibly your karma or your future incarnations. Um, or um, ultimately upon um, the path of, uh, of certain things. So for instance if you change the path of another person or the fate of, uh, um, of a group of people for instance, these could be considered to be more theurgic forms of magic. You're working more with formless energies than with form energies. This is where the distinction lies. And actually the first things you come across once you cross this threshold um, are the gods. So working with the gods is the lowest form of uh, theurgy. Ultimately you would in a way transcend uh, the gods who ultimately exist as teachers for mankind or for of course other kinds of beings but then they're not gods we would have that much contact with in general but yes also other beings have deities and um, the gods exist to teach us how to work with a certain principle like love war beauty wisdom and once we have learned all that the deity has yeah, to teach us then we can work with the energy directly instead of only through the guidance and supervision of the deity. And once we have we start mastering these energies, we can evolve into the states of um, yeah of self mastery and ultimately also mastery of powers more outside of our our own being, and thus take attain states of personal and ultimately cosmic enlightenment. Um, so theurgy is the path of using the will uh, within the formless world. While thaumaturgy is about using the will in the world's off form. And also within thaumaturgy we can create an evolution. So for instance if you look at the energy bodies which are also um, yeah, constructed for a specific purpose. You have like Parya energy bodies, you have Sutra energy bodies, Vaishya, Ksatriya, Brahmanic energy bodies. And depending on the qualities of your spirit, your energy body will also try to reflect at least those qualities of your spirit. So it will try to have more um, qualities of a certain nature but of course the development of those qualities in the world of form is also depending upon the social acceptance and support you get for behaving in such a way and how nourishing your environment is because we take everything into our incarnation more as a seed and as an already finished form unless we've had like more than 10 incarnations with a very similar purpose to make it strong and fixed enough to manifest directly in an already preset shape. Um, but um, so theurgy is um, indeed you could say the, the higher form of evolution 
So in the beginning I would say use thaumaturgy um, to in a way start to elevate your energy body so that it acquires more and more qualities of all the uh, castes up to, until the highest castes as well. And uh, once it has those qualities then it will be much easier to perform theurgy. If you have a Zutra or a Vaisha energy body it can be quite tricky because you have a lot of attachment. Um, you don't have enough discipline to easily perform magic at all, let alone higher magic. But once you start developing Satriya and Brahmanic qualities it will be much easier to have spiritual discipline and to have more of a, uh, an experience of your spirit, of your soul, of guiding powers like morality and ideals. They will become much more concrete, much more powerful in their influence on you. You will also, have, because your energy body will be a little bit more transparent, these principles can guide you uh, much more easily. So I would say first step is creating an energy body which is very suitable for performing magic and then of course by purifying it and elevating the consciousness which is ultimately able to go into the formless parts of the cosmos and there it is possible to perform theurgy. Um, if we are using the, the magical way uh, it is indeed very much about um, emulating. If we are using the mystical way, it is more about communion. Um, so if I would be a very a mystical person, I would simply pray to the different um, gods, deities, spiritual masters, uh, enlightened beings, and by receiving their blessings, I would yeah, start changing myself by listening to their guidance and ultimately I would also become more like them in a very um, yeah, natural fashion but also depending of course on my sensitivity and on my acceptance. If I cannot accept uh, all they offer, um, if my own will, if my own ego gets in the way with uh, having an open contact with them um, it becomes very much more difficult to get to the next step. So control of the ego, uh, humility are very necessary to uh, have a mystical progression. For the magical progression we really need a long will. If we do things in one lifetime it is generally not enough to create a really strong effect. If we do things for three lifetimes, then it really starts to become very solid, very powerful and create effects which will last. Um, so you can start of course this habit in this life, but it is not really useful to try to practice higher magic until you have developed a long will. Um, for the people who have missed the earlier videos about that, the long will is basically that you have such a focus and concentration of your spirit that your spirit can maintain the same purpose for several incarnations. So you are in a way starting to build a structure which will take many lifetimes to build and by in a way, creating those very solid foundations which are all the way strengthening and broadening over many lifetimes um, you can really build a lot of power and knowledge and without long will I've never seen anybody uh, practice theurgy who hadn't done that for at least three lifetimes probably more like five which you would need to really get into theurgy um, but maybe you've had those incarnations before and then you can benefit from it in, the, in this life so theurgy is about um, maneuvering in this formless cosmos, about finding the energies you need or you want and then ultimately leading them where you need them to go. Um, theurgy can be quite risky if you don't have enough hermetic knowledge. 
Um, so low magic can be performed without hermetic knowledge quite easily. Theurgy can be quite risky without hermetic knowledge. Because you're dealing with powers which are in a way also beyond normal comprehension and also beyond a normal scope. There are powers which don't only affect our planet or humanity, but which are really universal powers. And um, they're not comprehensible also by the human intellect. Our intellect simply cannot deal with such concepts or grasp such ideas. So ultimately our consciousness needs to transcend our humanity to be able to perform in a theoretic fashion. Um, but if we do so, we tend to also yeah, forget a lot of things because everything we learn we cannot really take with us because they are forms. Emotions are forms, personality is a form, knowledge is a form. But by working with these forms we can create a certain motion within our spirit, a certain habit in our spirit to behave in such a way that they do not break the laws of the cosmos. So by having an understanding of the cosmic laws we are able to mold our spirit. We can build behaviors, tendencies to act in such a way that we do not collide with these cosmic laws but rather use them and act in such a way that these cosmic powers will support us, will work together with us and we can then having built this tendency through our hermetic training move into the formless cosmos and there use our willpower to move in this cosmos and thereby to find certain powers and to guide certain powers into manifestation or actually also out of our manifestation. We can remove um, certain elements of our being uh, or at least the source of them and this way we can ultimately guide our own evolution, our own growth as a human being. We can be architects of our own fate, of our own um, life path by using theoretic techniques and also we can do that for others. But we have to be aware of course of the laws imposed upon us in our, our solar system for instance we have karma, um, there's of course the law of balance, there's the uh, law of symmetry. Um, so we have to take all these laws into account, we have to practice working within that framework when we go into theurgy and start acting in such a fashion. And ultimately are we then gods? In a way yes, in a way no. Um, as gods exist on a similar consciousness level, but gods are teachers. This is their function. They are in a way the intermediaries, natural intermediaries between a power and a specific species or even a specific culture. Because every culture or species will manifest that power in a unique fashion. Are we teachers by performing theurgy? No, we're not. Are we gods by performing theurgy? No, also we're not. But what we do is in a way um, we use a similar skill to the gods. Because the gods can see, can understand the action of the formless world upon the world of form. And they can teach us about it. And they can also work with it. They can alter in the same way as we do using theor a theoretic magic how this energy flows. So gods can also change our life path if it is necessary uh, for them to do so. So using theurgy is in a way becoming equal to gods in that fashion um, with regard to the power to manipulate using our will. It is not necessarily the same when it comes to consciousness. 
we don't necessarily have a complete comprehension of the concept that we're working with, whether it is love or money or um, fertility, for instance. But we can, even with a much more limited understanding than a deity has, we can still manipulate that energy and work with it, experiment with it. Um, this is a little bit similar to, like, I don't need to be a scientist and a chemist who, and metallurgist who knows how to make gunpowder and how to engineer a gun to pull a trigger. And uh, ultimately, um, this is also the difference between a deity who has, in a way, a knowledge and understanding, a complete grasp, and a, theor a theoretic mage who is basically pulling the trigger, who is using the energy to have a very specific effect, usually on a very limited target. So I wouldn't at all equal a surge to a deity. Um, if we go higher with theurgy and we ultimately come to layers of enlightenment, um, then by dint of our higher um, state of purity, our higher state of comprehension and uh, freedom and mastery, it becomes possible for a third um, to, in a way, work with gods as elements of their magic. So, for instance, they could um, perform evocations or mantras, um, which in a way are commanding a god or a goddess to do something specific. So then they become other, you could say, yeah, building blocks or elements which can be um, shifted to our will or aligned to act according to our actions. Um, so a, a third can be, in a way, the master of deities and achieve a higher station than the deities. But again, it doesn't automatically imply, imply a higher understanding. Like, for instance, a, a president may order that a power plant should be built and engineers will go and do it, that doesn't mean that the president understands anything about atomic energy or radiation or fission or fusion or engineering. He's just giving the order. So by also using uh, theurgy to elevate our station, we can get to such a boss position, but it's not necessarily creating that knowledge or experience or skill in ourselves. So I hope that this has given you a little bit more of, a, of an insight um, into the benefits and powers of uh, theurgy, which are indeed f very formidable, um, but also into the limitations of theurgy, because we don't become gods by becoming theurgists. It is possible that if we spend a lot of time in this formless world, and if the formless world becomes in a way more naturally our home than the world of form, that we won't take incarnation in the world of form anymore, but we will start taking incarnations in the formless world. And when such a shift has happened, it is possible to take an incarnation as a god or a goddess. But it's not so much the theurgy itself which makes it so. It is more the spending time in these higher realms which ultimately creates a different vibration and also a different habit in our spirit. And this different habit will ultimately seek a form in which this habit can be continued and this can be the form of a, um, of a god or a goddess. So if you use your theurgy to act like a god or a goddess, um, ultimately it, it can allow you to yeah, evolve into such a being. But personally, I think that if you want to turn into a god or a goddess or come very close to such a station, 
I would advise people to use uh, the mystical fashion to do that rather than the magical fashion but of course if your willpower is very big um, then yeah there is of course something to be said for just doing things yourself experimenting things yourself and doing it more in the Gnostic fashion of having the experience of yeah how it is to do it rather than just a feeling or knowledge or hearsay of uh, what it is like. Uh, I don't have to talk about the ego because if you have an ego then you definitely should not even try to do any theurgy because it will probably have a horrible backlash on you. So I hope this has given some insights as to the relationship of um, yeah, theurgy with uh, human evolution and regarding the statement that it will allow us to become one with God, I would ultimately have to say no, uh, because as long as our will exists and is not completely, in a way, absorbed or one or harmonious with the divine will, it will separate us from God. And it can be very difficult for a mage who has built up their will to a very high degree and a very great constancy and clarity and harmony to ultimately sacrifice it, to allow it to be uh, yeah, removed or overpowered, overshadowed by the voice of the divine. So... Um, Magic is a very good starter for the path of self-development because it will teach you a lot of knowledge, a lot of discipline. Uh, so for people who are starting on the magical path, or the path of spiritual evolution, I mean, definitely work with magic, practice, experiment, and from your failures you will gain a lot of understanding um, of the nature of the cosmos. But I would say for the later stages of development, I think it's better to switch to a more mystical discipline. Um, but also the more mystical discipline, especially if you're in a way a novice in the spiritual tradition, it can be very tempting, of course, to be guided. But often it leads to people being misguided because there is too little understanding, too little grasp, um, too little self-discipline and self-stabilization to really hold on to, um, to the gains you've made and not to be misguided also. So my ideal uh, for spiritual development would be to start magical to end more mystical.